Okay, so this video is in response to Minority Mindset 601K. Sounds familiar. Um, minority Mindset, get paid to quit your job. Our economy is running backwards. Uh, so this is another video YouTube fed me. I don't remember ever watching this guy before. Um, he's sort of entertaining. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if he's uh, Mexican Indian or what exactly, uh, but uh, the video, so the video, um, the video was on how government giving free money is going to cause inflation and that guacamole is good. Um, the big takeaways I got from it were that like, subscribe, and thank you to the Minority Mindset for letting me recall the third order, ring my bell. Um, that's the bell down somewhere next to the like or subscribe button, shaped like a bell. Um, that's for like notifications and stuff. So value creation, it's all about value creation and locking your liquidity into assets. Now, <laughs> the thing is, you need to be careful with that. I'm not an investment expert, I'm not a millionaire, um, so I'm not speaking from a position of um, reference, but things like the housing market are, are tanking. Uh, a lot of rent-based uh, incomes uh, where people rent out properties, that's suffering. Traditional businesses, investment in businesses, uh, a lot of commodities like oil are struggling. So you got to be careful in what you invest in because there may not be a good investment. Now, personally, my belief is, is the best investment you can have is the means to produce what you need in life. Because uh, anything after that is bonus. But if you can produce your own needs, then you're good. That means, you know, somewhere to food, water, shelter. Beyond that, yeah, like learning to feed yourself is important. That takes a lot. Not everybody can be a farmer or grow their own food or otherwise, but um, that takes a substantial upset to not be dependent upon the supply chain to supply you with your needs. Um, that's like financial freedom right there. But uh, the other thing was that, you know, who pays for what? Like, the idea is, is that. You know, the government's giving out a bunch of money now, so you're gonna end up getting paid. You're gonna end up having to pay for it. I think that these are really false conceptions to the the whole thing. Um, again, these people have these concepts that work equals money, and I think that's what people are pushing the idea over and over and over again. But no, work doesn't equal money. Um, money is created and work is not necessarily going to give you money it may give you money give some people more money than other people um, at the end of the day though money gets you stuff people are willing to trade for money and there's a lot of quote-unquote wealth that already exists and has been created and is held as capital the, the capital pool is large very very large there's a lot of assets and a lot of things there's perishable goods and there's non-perishable goods and people are going to be trading um, as long as there's a supply of things that people can use money to get then money will have value but when people stop taking money for things um, then the money doesn't have value anymore so no we don't pay for anything we get stuff and then we can use that stuff for other things we're never forced to pay for something or to do something but there's repercussions for us failing to do what we are expected to do um, for instance if we make money then there's tax rates on that money um, if you don't pay that money then you go to jail or other issues happen from that but um, as far as you know, all these bailouts costing people, like people are gonna have to pay for them? No, 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 people aren't gonna have to pay for anything. Uh, again, understand that the Federal Reserve Act is a voided legal act anyway, and 
it was it can be written off at any time um, there's more gold in the treasury without dollar having a locked currency it has no value it's a floating point currency all the money in the US is worth absolutely nothing uh, other than itself and the Federal Reserve Act can be cancelled and all that debt disappears um, as far as the, the print debt and whatnot and then if you cancel the currency or you convert the currency they can change all that with the law and it doesn't matter it's just the idea of who holds the wealth and what the value of the dollar is so all of these loans are being held by the value of the US currency which goes back to the inflation thing so um, you know it's 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 all inflation and it never has to be repaid the debt would never be repaid anyway the, it's impossible like the US debt will never be repaid so that's just like it's this figmentary issue of just it, it's part of the game of substantiating grounds for taxation is that this needs to keep on being paid so the US doesn't default because they don't want to change the system because the people that hold the wealth and are owed the money run the government or the stakeholders in the government so um, obviously they want their money it's pretty simple. It doesn't need to be paid, but if they don't get paid, the people that are owed the money don't get it. But if the people that are owed the money don't get it, who cares? It will, like, nothing happens. They just don't have money. They need to create new wealth, um, which is what they do. It's rather than getting free money, like, they're getting free money because they're owed money, and that money accumulates interest, so they just get free money. If there's no such thing as free money, yeah, there is. There is free money. It's called being owed money and having interest on that money and being paid the interest and never being paid the, the actual money and just living off of interest. That's a financial plan. It's just living off the interest of your of your of your wealth. So um, you never have to use your your uh, capital uh, or your your principal. You just you live off your interest or a portion of your interest. So that's seventy five fifteen ten rule. Instead of taking that, you take a whatever rate of interest you have on that money. Right now, it's like zero because the interest rate is horrible. But it's the ROI. So whatever your ability to input interest on your revenue you know sp saving money is all good but if you're losing your money by saving it again you're not saving money you're losing money by holding it as cash so I think there's a lot of little issues and I'm sure you're smart enough to understand this you're just simplifying it for people um, or having the idea that you know people saving they still have money when they need it rather than not having money when they need it even if it's less money than they would have had if they used the money for something like buying food or um, investing in land that they could sustain themselves on because they probably can't afford that anyway but uh, yeah so that's that and I think that um, there's a lot of good takeaways from this but uh, I'm, I'm honestly like I guess it's frustration but a lot of people that are pushing the concept of this illusionary economy and all these values that are very traditional values hard work and and um, earning your keep and contributing to the, um, the value. All that stuff doesn't matter because basically everything's owned, the system is owned, and most of it's owned by a very limited number of people. And it's all about them generating a system that allows them to continue to make money and for them to benefit from the system that exists and for everybody else, it's them not interrupting that system. And people, if they want to succeed, they need to be part of, of the system unless they're being kept alive to be used as an effect, such as against people, other people. So it's like control and power. So you're controlling the population to affect benefits to your own system um, so there's a lot of ripple down people not working can be more beneficial than people working in a way that destabilizes your system so again the idea that people produce goods and goods produce betterment of society no it doesn't work that way it's if people produce something that is actually beneficial then it's good like people going out making cocaine and um, you know that causes brain damage or uh, let's say alcohol people produce alcohol there's a lot of money in alcohol there's, there's a lot of money in alcohol um, people are kind of like alcohol some alcohol can be good for people but some alcohol cannot be good for people 
So it's not that this is going to be good. It's not necessarily going to be good, but it may help some people, but it may actually have a da damaging effect on society. Same thing of cutting down all the, the rainforests. You know, it's maybe good for farmers in Brazil or resource development to Brazil. Benefits some people, but maybe it's having negative effects too. So you need to look at the big picture and that not everything that generates money is beneficial. So not everybody going out and working hard is actually doing a good thing for society. Um, the principle is there and it's being pushed and it's these values that are being pushed, but it's an incredibly ignorant viewpoint on life and society and overgeneralization of these things. If you want to do something that helps society or it helps yourself be in a better position, then it all comes down to not necessarily working hard, but not working against your interests. Okay, I got a it's sort of negative a bit, but it's like noon and I've been up all night and day, and I think I'm I'm like done, like fatigued, done. Um, but I gotta, I gotta keep doing this because um, I only have so many hours of quarantine left to be productive, posting YouTube videos and talking nonsense.